Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. I went through uh, past week looking at a bunch of topics like I do and take snapshots of those topics and uh, come on here and we'll talk about them. We are still waiting for the rapture. I do believe it could happen any second. I still believe it's going to happen in 2022. A good sun gathers before winter. Um, winter officially kicks off, or gathers in summer. Uh, winter officially kicks off on December the 21st. December the 21st is the shortest day of the year. Um, it is the winter solstice. So I want to show you a few things and pointing to a couple of dates that I've been looking at. And I've noticed that a lot of other YouTubers, watchers are looking at December to the 21st. Um, I get to that date as well in a different fashion, but is God pouring out uh, his spirit? How it works is that you're just sitting there and you're asking what's next? What can we look for? What can we try to figure out? And something gets laid on your heart as to the next possible high watch day. High watch days, again, are not God said so. They are us just shaking that present, trying to figure out when he's coming back because it's the most important thing to us and we can't think of anything else more important um, in our lives. I personally don't believe any of the seals have been opened yet. Um, when you look at the seals, you can see the horse of war, the horse of famine, the horse of of uh, death. Uh, we've had that since Adam and Eve sinned. I wonder, and they didn't have the Bible back then, um, pre-flood, but I wonder if they didn't think that the four horsemen had been released before the flood. Throughout time, we've had horrible things happening, not as a result of anything God is doing. It is as a result of our sin. When we get to heaven, we are going to see Adam and Eve. God killed an animal and made a covering of that animal as a sacrifice for their sins. They are forgiven, and they will be there. Not a single one of us will be able to walk up to Adam and Eve when we get to heaven and say, why did you do this? You started all this. Not a single one of us are sin-free to be able to point a finger like that. Um, I, for one, am going to give Adam and Eve, the parents of all of us, a big hug when we get there. So let me go through the pictures, and uh, we'll discuss this. Hopefully my headset's acting right. It's been acting goofy, so hopefully it's acting right this this video. The first day of the year is always St. Patrick's Day. It is always New Year's Day. Nissan won on the timeline number one, the timeline, my most favorite timeline, March 17th. That's always the first day of the year. The day Lazarus died, the day before the first day of the year, the day of equal parts, the day that God, uh, Jesus said in the garden, uh, sorry, uh, when they brought him news that Lazarus was extremely ill, was the day Jesus admitted that he had died, and that are there not 12 hours in a day? There is only one day in spring where this happens, and that is on March 16th. We have that as a witness. We also have, if you go into time and date right now, anybody can do it, and just look up March 16th, you'll see that there's 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night on this day. Also, on this day in Israel, the fourth star of Pegasus, named Algenim, will skirt across the horizon. So for me, this is my favorite timeline. God also speaks of timeline number five quite a bit. You see that down there at the bottom of, you know, where it says Nissan 1 in green. The first sliver of the moon after the sun is in Aries. That happened this year on May 2nd. It will not happen again next year on May 2nd. Every single year, the equinox will always happen on March 17th, without, or, well, on March 16th, but the first day of the year will always be March 17th. Every single year, it never budges, it never changes throughout time, it has always been the same. It doesn't matter 
about the position of the constellation behind the sun for us to determine the head of the year. It is determined based on the rotation of the Earth around the sun and where the equator is facing. At this moment, on March 17th, we're four days away from the sun crossing over the equator. However, on March the 21st, you can see there for the equinox, there is nowhere on the planet, on the face of the Earth, where the day equals 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night. That only happens on March the 16th. So I go through the timeline, and you go down here to the bottom, and you see that each of these months have 30, 30, and then 31. 30, 30, and 31. And I simply took the first day of the year, being Nissan 1, and assigning it a Gregorian date. It was real simple. And I went down the timeline and said, well, if I go down the timeline to the day Jesus went to the cross, I know that happened on Nissan 14. If I start out my head of the year on March 17, and I add, well, the head of the year being March, 4, uh, March 16th, but the first day being March 17th, and I add 14 days, because we know Jesus went to the cross 14 days later, he went to the cross on March the 30th, 2,000 years ago. The anniversary of that event will always fall on March the 30th, every single year. The anniversary of, of Jesus going to the cross. The anniversary of Jesus rising, defeating death, busting that tomb wide open, will always land on April the 2nd. On timeline number five, down there at the bottom, it does not always land on May the 16th. It will move depending on where the, the, the moon is. There's actually a warning in the book of Enoch about uh, uh, watching the moon because it'll bring in the seasons 10 days too soon because the moon rotates around the earth 354 days a year and we have 364 days a year that this that Enoch talks about plus the day out of time, so one long day, and that makes up the 365 days. So Remember, I want you to remember this because I'm going to get back to this uh, in the in the pictures. March the 16th is the day of equal parts. March the 17th is Nissan 1. That's a DAR 31, March the 16th, a DAR 31. And then the first day of the year, Nissan 1 on the Equilux will always be March 17th. Let's go down here. This uh, timeline was given to me by, by Ecro Symphony. She put this on a, a, my, my messed up timeline that I do by hand. She put it all on this for me. A couple of people have. Also, endtimestudies.com has done it as well. Uh, you can go in there and look at this timeline on, on her website. Um, it's really cool that uh, I got a little bit of backing here, some people helping me out, and plus, uh, hopefully, I've helped them out. Uh, with what they're looking at. Equal Symphony does a fantastic job about um, taking numbers and synchronizing them. She can find the synchronicity of numbers and, and put them together, which is an amazing gift she has. I don't have that gift. I'm not jealous. I have my gift. She has hers, and it's amazing. We all have a gift. God gave us all a gift, and uh, some of us see, like, dream dreams, and some of us, and I've had a, a few myself, um, but some people just dream amazing dreams. It's not my gift. It's their gift. And I will listen to those dreams and apply it where I can to uh, to these timelines and see where we're at. I believe Mary, you can see it in red up there. She put it in red for me, was conceived on December the 25th, Christmas Day. I believe that Jesus was conceived. And why do I say that? Jesus would have spent exactly to the day, 280 days in the womb, 40 weeks. He would have not gone one day over or one day left. The argument that sometimes baby, that's fine, but they're not Jesus. Jesus would have done it perfectly. So, conceived here, where, now remember, you have a conception, you have a birth, and then you have eight days later for the circumcision. I believe all of this, and the reason we're told all of this, is pointing us to when all this happened. I don't believe for the past thousands of years or thousand years, however long Christmas uh, they've been, I believe it had to have come out, you know, 2,000 years ago, right? I don't believe this is an accident. I believe that every 
single day that is created by God and put on a calendar is a day of God, God's days, all God's days. Satan has come in and tried to take the 13th for himself. He tried to take December the 25th for himself. He's tried to take these days so that you won't look at them. He does that on purpose, and a lot of people are upset about, oh, December 25th is a pagan holiday. It might be now, but it wasn't originally when God set this up. Why do I think Jesus was born, I'm sorry, conceived on December the 25th? Let's go back here. You see up there at the top, that is the beginning of tabernacles. Jesus comes and tabernacles with us. A tabernacle is a tent of sorts, temporary dwelling, correct? So that would explain why Jesus, exactly to the very day, 40 weeks later, 280 days, would have been born on September the 30th, October the 1st. The only reason... And, 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 and honestly, if you go back here, you could say, well, when Hanukkah begins, Jesus was conceived. And then you can go over here exactly 280 days, and guess where you'll land? You'll land on Feast of Trumpets. Pretty good number, right? But what happens eight days later? Nothing. When was Jesus circumcised? He was circumcised eight days later. There is no event after Feast of Trumpets eight days later. Let's go back here again. Let's just say he conceived when the flood ended, right? Go over here. Four days later after um, Feast of Trumpets, nothing. And then eight days after that, nothing. There's nothing there. But if we show Jesus being conceived on December the 25th, and we go forward exactly 280 days, 40 weeks, we will find that Jesus was born on tabernacles. And guess what? There is an event. Eight days later, the day tabernacles ends. It is the day. Tabernacles is a seven-day feast. But on the eighth day, I think they call it a solemn assembly or one final party or, or whatever, they, uh, whatever the terminology is. But the last day of tabernacles would have ended on October the 8th. Jesus was born on September the 30th, October the 1st. September the 30th for us, October the 1st for Israel. October the 8th, Jesus would have been circumcised on our timeline and on the 9th in Israel. All of these dates uh, are able to move around a day before or a day after, depending upon um, where you are on the planet. So, that being said, yes, I believe Jesus was conceived on December the 25th. Now... A conception. How long did I say? 280 days. Exactly. To the day. 40 weeks. And this is where my story comes in. My timeline comes in. Guess what happens? Exactly. 40 weeks. Exactly. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. How long is a gestational period? Once you discover the first day of the year, and you add exactly to the day, 40 weeks, 280 days, you come down here, and we find that on December the 21st, which is four days before Jesus was conceived, that you'll land on December the 21st. You say, I don't have it on this timeline, because I didn't understand that it might be important to show you the winter solstice, the last day of summer, a good sun gathers in summer, the last day before winter begins, December the 21st. So December the 21st is something that I am looking at very intently, and that's why right there, the rapture, like the Bible says, once we figure it out, once we know once everybody says, this has got to be it, this has to be it, we're right at the end of the fig tree generation being able to fit. And all of the, did you know that the, and I'm going to show you that too, so that a lot of the stuff I found is from other YouTubers. Um, did you know that uh, they gave, out of nowhere, they gave Netanyahu another 10 days. He has until now, the 21st, for the Kaduri prophecies to be correct. And how did he know? Years before. Years after he passed away, years before Netanyahu and, and the other Benjamin came on the scene, that there'd be two Benjamins 
um, uh, in a debate trying to become the uh, Prime Minister of Israel. How did he know that? <laughs> this is years before they even came onto the scene. So, so far, God has poured out his spirit on Kaduri, and I believe Kaduri was the one that admitted that Jesus is God and that he is the Savior. He is Messiah. And that just turned them upside down. They did not like hearing that at all. Um, so Kaduri said that before they can form their government, which is what they're doing now, they're working on it, they're trying to put together a government. Before they can form said government, we will be out of here. So everything is culminating to this point right now. And like I said, once we figure it out, we say, oh, wait a second, it is December the 21st. We've, we've got this. We know this. God makes a little comment in there that he'd take us before that. It's almost like he says, okay, you figured it out. Now it's time to go. And we go before that time. So any moment now, any moment right now, between right now and December the 21st, we're all watching. If it goes past that, guess what? We're going to continue to try to figure it out. And we're going to bring you the, and it's not just me, it's a lot of YouTubers, a lot of wonderful YouTubers that I love watching uh, every single day that encourage me to continue to watch. And I encourage you the same thing. Keep watching. Um, we're just human. We're trying to figure it out. I'm not in this for any kind of personal gain. I'm doing this out of a labor of love. And I, and I just would love to encourage you. I just want to encourage you. All right, let's get back to the photos. The Symphony did that. That's my handwritten one that I did. That's the four beasts and the six generals per beast, and that's what it would look like, uh, our, our uh, military group that we'll be under. And in the center, of course, is Jesus. He is the leader. This keeps happening to me. I'm not, I, I, mean, I swear I'm not trying to make this happen. I don't have this gift. I never did. I've never seen this before, but it won't stop happening. And I, I, don't, I don't know what it means. I, ha I can't quite nail it down. I don't know exactly what it means, but the only thing I can associate with it is God is sending us a message telling us, hang in there. You're, I've already dispatched an angel to you, and this is your angel letting you know that they're right next to you all the time. And they're ready to snatch you out of danger at any given moment when this thing kicks off, and that it's a comforting sign from your angel. But it doesn't stop happening. It just keeps happening. I wrote this. It looks like a month ago, and uh, I put it in my community page. I don't know if everybody saw it, but it says, I'm looking forward to going to heaven, a place I can't imagine, where a brilliant white robe I don't deserve will be placed on me. Being given many crowns, I will be ashamed to keep as I hand them back to the one that deserves them. To see a mansion created for me, I had nothing to do with building. Nothing. We had nothing to do with building this mansion. Sitting at a banquet, I didn't prepare. Being given a rod of iron to rule over nations I've never lived in. And this goes for everyone on the planet. Remember in this rapture, there's the, the, the revelations. And I'm going to do a, a, a revelation study with everyone. That's my next video, actually. I want to read Revelation and show you the seven churches, like so many are pointing out, are speaking to today. And those six seals, while I don't believe a single one has been opened yet, um, and I can show you where the bride goes, and I can show you very quick succession of seals, and on the sixth seal, the, uh, the saints go. And I know they're the saints and not the bride because they came out of great tribulation, and they have washed their robes white. They've, they've had, there's an action. They're in a different dispensation. We're in the dispensation of grace right now. I don't believe the, the horsemen have rode uh, yet or been released yet simply because what we see is what we've always seen. Nothing's changed. When we see those horsemen, it's going to be something else. Why Jesus has done this for us, I don't understand. I will spend an eternity drawing ever nearer to try. We're going home soon, family. Like Jesus said, it is finished. He finished it, not us. 
again, December the 5th, that happened. I'm, I'm not, and, and you know what the amazing thing is? Is that when I do see it, I have more than enough. It has never happened to me once yet, not once, where I saw the 1111 or some series of numbers, and I pull, I have my phone out and I see it, and it's like you have to get your camera, and then you have to take a picture. Um, it's never happened that it rolled over to 12 before I could do that. It's I've always had plenty of time to take multiple pictures or even like put it back in my pocket and realize, wait a minute, that's at 11-11. and pull it back out and take the picture. I've never missed the picture, ever. Um, I'll go over this. is This is proof. I'll go over this uh, when I do the... Uh, the Revelation study with everyone, um, pre-trib rapture, I can prove that to you. I don't know what 333 means, but uh, it happened on December the 6th. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, maybe it means 666, I don't I don't know. Here again, 7-7 seven, seven of December. This is, this is numbers that match. Uh, uh, they, they synchronize. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to read. This is cool. Um, uh, many have brought this out. You've seen this. There are 2,300, what is it? Yeah, 2,598 days. And I never knew this before. This is actually an incredible find. I just don't know how to apply it uh, to make it symmetric uh, at this moment. I'm hoping one of these uh, YouTubers have figured out the symmetrics of this to point us to an actual date. Um, according to all this, obviously, all these days have passed, and so the symmetrics of before the blood moons began and after the blood moons would bring us to a date. Did anything happen on December? Like how many days after um, April 30th, 2022, for the 2598 days, how many days after that is it to December the 21st? And was there an event uh, that amount of days prior to the Passover? of 4-15-2014. You see what I'm saying? I'm looking for some symmetrics in that uh, to figure that out. This is on Wackadoodle Samoan's um, page. Who else feels like they are in suspended animation right now? All the signs are there. Seems like the tribulation is coming. I like, uh, let's say, oh, in like a high-speed train, and yet everything just keeps going on like normal. Sometimes I can't even wrap my head around it. Like I know food shortages are coming, but I still buy silly little things for fun instead of buying more food to store. Maybe I'm in denial because it's all too scary, but I can't just keep going on like this. This is the attitude of a lot of people right now where we're kind of in a suspended animation right now, where we're kind of in a holding pattern. We, we've exhausted every day and we're still trying to figure it out, but where is it going from here? In the rapture, obviously, God says that, you know, we are to encourage one another and not to be frustrated, but I believe the frustration or the, and the, uh, the concern for this date passing is a part of it, and it shows us who we are. There we go again, December the 8th. Now, Kevin... Spinebreaker, who's in a little chat group with me, has made a comment that the 15th, you'll see there on the 15th, moon phases, on the 15th, it's exactly light and dark on the moon. And he likens this to the 10 bridesmaids, or the 10 virgins, sorry, not bridesmaids, it doesn't call them bridesmaids, it calls them virgins, to the 10 virgins. Five had oil. Therefore, they had light, and five did not. Therefore, their, can, their, their uh, lamps were dim. Wouldn't this be a perfect rapture scenario on December the 15th, based on that uh, verse we, we read about the ten, vir uh, the ten virgins? And I thought that was pretty cool. So we have December the 15th that we're looking at as well. We passed, obviously, December the 8th with the full moon, and... Uh, it looks like it's still kind of full even after that, all the way up to the 10th. It looks like it's still full. What's the date today? Yep, it's the 10th today. Give them a shout out. Remember, please go to these. Um, please go to these YouTubes that I'm going to show you, and uh, subscribe to them.
God put it on my heart some time ago uh, when I made, I forget where it is, I made a chart of of the fact that there is a bride. And we couldn't quite wrap our minds around the fact that the bride will be taken, but then there's these other people that also believe in Jesus, and they won't be taken for three and a half years. And I started studying that, and I could not prove that. I couldn't prove that. I couldn't prove that those seals were opened up over the course of three and a half years and that the other seals were opened up after the three and a half years when Satan goes in and proclaims himself to be God and then enforces after that everyone to receive a mark. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't prove those seals were three and a half years long. From what I can see, and nobody's been able to show me any differently, um, that the seals, in fact, could have be open within seven days. So when Noah went into the ark, the ark door was open. He went into the doorway of the ark. All the animals came in and he sat there. He sat there in the doorway of that ark for seven days. The door stayed open. In the Revelation, when you read about the churches, there's, I think it's Philadelphia and Smyrna. I believe those are the only two. I'm, again, I have to go back and do some studying, but those are the only two where it speaks of a door is open that no man can shut, and there's a door closed that no man can open. It's speaking to both of those, and I don't know. There are seven churches, and I know there are several. I believe there is a couple, two to three raptures, and always before a rapture, the earth trembles and the dead in Christ rise first. So the dead watches would rise, and then the dead... Uh, saints would rise, and um, there's a lot of stuff that's about to go on, a whole bunch, and we'll get all of our answers when we get to heaven. I'm not concerned about that. The only thing I have concern with whenever I promote a channel is I need to hear them say that Jesus Christ is God Almighty. He is the one that created everything that we see. He is the one that came here and was born of a virgin, lived a perfect sinless life, died on a cross, and three, and a half, uh, three days later, he rose, defeating death, and paid the penalty for all of our sins. Like we always say, if you want something done right, go and do it yourself. And that's exactly what God did. He came here and did it himself. Only God himself could pay the penalty for the sins of mankind. Only God himself could come here and stay sin-free for, for the 33 and a half years he was here. And only God could do such a thing. We couldn't. He gave us so many different ways to do it. Uh, all they had to do was get into the ark pre previous to the flood. They wouldn't do it. The eight did, but they wouldn't do it. All they had to do was obey the Ten Commandments and the law of God. That's all they had to do, but they can't. God has given us ways to get there, but then proof that there's no way to get there under our own work. So he gave us the one thing and the only thing that can reconcile us to heaven, and that is Jesus Christ, God Almighty, Emmanuel, perfect in every way, our leader. Um, so if, you're, you, if you have a difference of opinion of how things are playing out with the seals and, and are we in this and are we doing all I need to hear is that you say Jesus Christ, is God Almighty, and the only way that we're going to get into heaven is through him. No one comes to the Father unless the Father uh, draw him. No one co goes to heaven except through Jesus. So it's pretty clear to me, and that's why I promote these channels, not because we're on the same exact page with everything, because that would be silly, but that they know who Jesus is. And if you know who he is, you're doing pretty good. Let's give them a shout out. Who are they? This is a new one I just found out. She actually made a comment on my uh, YouTube, and I went to search for her. I couldn't find her. Somebody finally uh, put a uh, a link to her. Uh, she only has 254 subscribers. Uh, she, it was either her or she's describing someone. I don't recall who, but uh, it's a full, you can see me down there at the bottom where I'm watching her channel, listening to her, and I think, oh, this is good. So I subscribed to her full moon dreams she's had this dream and she was on the concept of december the 8th which is fine that might have been just a, a, a warning to when we're actually going 
you know, so got a minute. There's that graph down there of the 200, the 2,598 days. Got a minute, uh, did this. He did a really good job. Aaron over there got a minute. So uh, he has more subscribers than I do. But if you're not subscribed to him, please go subscribe. He does a very good job on his videos. I like his, uh, his humor. Kim Fisher, her toddler. Down there at the bottom, and I was actually uh, still listening to Cleo when I was, uh, when I had already heard this, but her child, her toddler, is saying, just uh, barely able to speak, but what is what the toddler is saying is, Abba, diggity, we, diggity, and then we're going home. Uh, you can go listen to this video, and you actually hear her child saying this stuff, and so Kim Fisher is a really good channel. Of course, we are the overcomers. He's uh, he's very uh, he's a very patient um, guy. I really like his videos. He does a fantastic job. I want to point out. It says down there in his last video, 4.9 thousand views six months ago. But YouTube did a new thing where if you want to see his latest video, you actually also have to click on the home button or on the live button. Some of these videos are coming out, and we don't even know. Like, I'll swing by, and it'll show me that he has a new video, and I'll go by, and I'm like, six months ago, I have to hit the live button. He, I think he's been doing lives lately, so you don't see his latest video, so you actually have to go and hit the live button to see his latest video. So he's a really nice guy. I uh, actually had people commenting in my YouTube telling me that I need to uh, put, him, uh, put him out there and, and talk about him. So here I am. Looking up, uh, she's just she's just awesome. She's she's fantastic. Uh, she she has a uh, Facebook. Um, she does a, a wonderful job in her Facebook, and she actually has. She does what I do. She puts a lot of the watchers in there, and YouTubers in there that are trying to figure this out. And she is very non-apologetic about um, these dates that we're looking at. She's non and she will she will she has a. Uh, I don't remember if it's an earlier video or what, but she, she does a very good explanation. I don't know if it's in her community page. I, I don't recall where it's at. Maybe she can put it back up there. She's very non-apologetic about trying to figure out these dates, and, tell, to t and she tells you why and why it's so important, and I really loved her explanation. So uh, Ikra Symphony, she's the one that made my chart there. Um, she uh, does a very good job. Uh, she she uh, is looking also like everybody else trying to figure this out. So please go subscribe to these channels. December the 9th, 111. Just it just keeps <laughs> it just keeps happening. There, March 16th, Adar 31, the last day of the year, the day of equal parts. The very next day, March 17th, will always be the first day of the year. You count 40 weeks exactly, 280 days. I didn't even realize this was uh, was a thing until this December 21st thing kept coming out, coming out, and then I said, I looked on my timeline, I said, well, that's weird, that's 280 days, because, you know, I count the days beginning here on March 16th, March 17th, and it it comes to 280 days, so I go back and do, a, you know, just a check in, uh, in the calculator to make sure I hadn't made a mistake, and there you go. Are we born again on this day? We're born again when we accept it. Uh, Jesus Christ saved us and that he is the only way into heaven and no works of our own will get us there in this age of grace and here we come exactly perfectly from the head of the year to December the 21st a good son gathers in summer this is the shortest day of the year and you know um, who was it hold on Ken Potter <laughs> go watch this latest video he makes a very good argument that this moment, December 21st, the darkest night of the year, is the midnight of the year. And there are so many passages in the Bible talking about midnight being when the, Lord, the, mid, when the cry would go out. And he, he, I love this last video he did. It was awesome. And pointing to December 21st as the midnight of the year. And let me show you this. You can see this up here at the top. June 21st is the summer solstice, but down here at the bottom, he, I think uh, it was I think it was uh, Kevin makes a comment that I must decrease while Jesus increases. 
December 21st, the winter solstice. This is the circuit of the sun. If you take a uh, a map or whatever and you put a stick in the ground, how do you call that thing? Uh, when you put the stick in the ground, the shadow uh, points to something. I'm going to forget that name right now. Anyway, when you do that, you can see how the shadow goes, and it makes a figure eight, infinity. And the shortest day of the year, which you can go on to date and time, and look it up yourself, this is the shortest day of the year, the midnight of the year, down here at the bottom. When John decreases, Jesus will increase. From this very moment here, Jesus begins to increase. So I thought that was pretty cool. Let's see here, where was I? Ken Potter. Yeah, so please go subscribe to him and watch uh, watch his latest video. It's amazing. So I'm in the chat room talking to him. I'm like, yep, December 21st. You must be born again to enter into heaven. The perfect gestation period of a baby is 280 days, 40 weeks. Jesus would have adhered to that perfect number. I'll just say it. The day of equal parts is March 16th, plus 40 weeks. I just discovered this. I was in the chat room talking with them, and it blew my mind that it landed on this day. The last day of summer, the solstice, the shortest day of the year. I just learned this today, halfway through the Jewish Hanukkah, as I see it. So this will be halfway, December 21st is halfway through Hanukkah, as the Jews see it. Uh, my Hanukkah goes from the 8th until the 16th. Um, but the world is looking at Hanukkah from December the 18th through the 26th. And on December the 21st, um, it is the day of equal parts coming on December the 22nd, which is exactly halfway through Hanukkah. And I believe Kevin said there is some passage in the Bible, something to the effect of halfway through Hanukkah, somebody went somewhere, and I don't recall. I, I should have uh, gotten better information on that. Um, Steve Fletcher is on here, and he is uh, pointing out that they have given Netanyahu 10 more days to form his coalition, 10 more days landing on December the 21st. So a lot of things are pointing to December the 21st. This is us when we come to, cross, to, uh, to the cross. Notice, he doesn't bring money, he doesn't bring works, he doesn't bring anything. He comes in on his knees and realizes that he is the one, not Adam and Eve, him, us. We are the ones that drove that nail into Jesus' hand because of all of our sins. But he willingly did it to save us from our sins. And Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is the only one that could have done that for us. No, nothing could have done that for us. No angel, no created being, only God himself could come here and perform this for us and save us from ourselves. Um, December, okay, so Jesus, I, like I said, Jesus was uh, conceived on December the 25th, 40 weeks later, September the 30th, October the 1st, he would have been born. Looking up, again, her, her Facebook's incredible. Uh, she posts all this kind of stuff nonstop. Watchman on the wall, you know Chad, everybody does, he has quite a following, um, but he is, uh, looking at uh, also the Abraham Accords. He's, he's very heavy into the Abraham Accords and how they're about to be strengthened. This is yet another thing pointing to us being out of here. The rapture happens first, he says. The Abraham Accords is playing its part in laying out the groundwork for the future of Daniel 9.27, that covenant, the covenant that the Antichrist will confirm. This, con this covenant is here. The Abraham Accords already exist. All they have to do now, like the Bible says, is confirm a covenant. They will do this just after we leave. Uh, why did I take this down? In the, oh, I'm just showing you who God is. This is God right here. In the beginning was the Word. That's the beginning. That's God. And the Word was with God. Okay. And the Word was God. So the Word was there in the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. So whoever this is, the Word made all of these things. And all things were made by Him, and without Him, not anything made that was made. 
in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Even Satan didn't recognize Jesus when he came here and who he was. Otherwise, he would have never tempted him for 40 days out in the wilderness. So I don't want to bring the video on too long. I have a habit of over-talking. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And uh, kneel down in there and recognize recognize you need to recognize what you have to offer which is zero nothing only thing you can do is plead on the blood of Christ to save you he is the only way to heaven there is no other way and he is God Almighty and without God Almighty we just don't make it we just don't make it and uh, I'm gonna do another video on Revelation I want to go through the churches I would like to sit down and assign each church to a different group. Remember, we have the dead in Christ, the bride, the watchers that have been going on throughout time that will rise first. And then we have those who, which are alive and remain to rise up. How far after that? I don't think it's much time. Maybe they'll be in prison for 10 days. Maybe the ark door will close after seven days. Maybe those seals open up in seven to 10 days. I personally don't believe a single seal has been opened up yet. Everything we see going on now has been going on since I mean, they must have thought those seals were being opened when the flood was going down, but they weren't. They weren't. Those, those seals are reserved for a special time. And then we're going to go through and look at the seals themselves. And at the sixth seal, we're going to see this massive group of people. And we know this is not the bride. And why do we know this isn't the bride? Because they came out of great tribulation. They washed their robes white. They have palm branches. And they were given... The, the, the wash robe that was washed in the blood of Christ. This group is not the bride. They came out of great tribulation. They came out of um, travail. There is a group of people that are taken out before anything happens. They are taken out before she travailed, before she went into labor, before the tribulation. The Bible speaks of it. And you can see that in I have to go back is Revelations 4, I think. Revelation 4 or 3, where you see this sea of glass and these 24 elders. And we are all behind each one, one of those elders. Uh, we belong to that group. They're, call it a military group. Call it what you want. I, I would associate it with that. You could use football or soccer, whatever you want. But you've got a head coach. You've got assistant coaches. You've got all kinds of people. And then you have the actual players. Um, you don't have a game if you don't have the players, but you don't have players if you don't have the leaders telling the players how to play. So um, it's a good analogy. Any one of those are a good analogy of what we're about to see. You can have a king over no one. I mean, you can call yourself a king if you have no subjects. What kind of king are you? You know, so go to a quiet place. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and please subscribe to as many channels as you can. The, uh, it, it, like I said, if I go to a channel and they're like, Jesus isn't God, he was created on this date. Yeah, I don't follow those channels. I just don't. I'm not going to talk bad about them. Hopefully God turns them to him. That's, you know, changes their mind on that and makes them realize who Jesus is. But uh, in the end, when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, what a day. What a day it's going to be. We're all going to see each other. We're going to all be, all be strong. No more scars. No more anything wrong. I don't want to shave anymore. I grow a beard in about three days. Look at that. I just shaved last night. No more shaving. Can I get this hair to grow up here? That would be nice. Repo Man 64. God bless you. And I think we're going home any moment. And just hang in there. Just hang in there and just keep keep your eyes open and keep watching. God has given all of you a gift. And whether it's seeing numbers, which I don't even know why I'm seeing numbers. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's weird. Dreaming dreams, having children that, uh, you know, profess that Jesus is coming soon. You name it. To understand mathematics like I don't, you know, with this the symmetry between these numbers of the blood moons. I didn't even know that those blood moons fell 2,598 days apart. Can you imagine? There's something huge there. I don't know. I don't know the symmetry behind it, but I would really love to hear it. Something's going. I'd really love to hear and 
show me a date. So we're still looking at 2022, but we're going to keep watching. We'll chat with you later, YouTube. Have a wonderful, blessed day.